Hello YouTube, today I'm going to be building a new computer. My current laptop really struggles with editing and it just makes everything harder than it should be. I don't really know much about computers, like I never did any computer subjects at school, but today I'm going to learn how to get this all done and I've been doing a little bit of research, so hopefully it all works out. This is a computer I used to edit all my videos. It's a 2013 13 inch MacBook Air. Before I start editing any video, I usually wipe the whole computer basically and by the time I finish importing all my footage and that, I usually fill the whole computer. And also I usually run out of application memory, so that's RAM. This only has like 4 gigabytes of memory. So originally I was just going to go out and buy a new computer. I was thinking about just getting an iMac. But one of my mates suggested I should build a computer because it would probably be a bit cheaper. Shout out Noel Cody. The thing that was putting me off from doing that though was you can't run Final Cut on Windows. But I found out there's a way you can run Mac OS on a custom computer. So I decided that's what I was going to do. Did a bit of research and found out you can't just use any old parts. You got to buy stuff that will actually work with Mac OS. And this is what I came up with. I'm not sure if it's going to work yet though. So if you're seeing this video, that means it works. But I'm hopefully going to have it as a dual boot computer so you can use Mac OS and also Windows. So these are the parts I bought. I'm going to talk about them more as I'm using the part to build. Alright, let's get right into this. So the motherboard is one of the most important parts when it comes to building a Hackintosh. You can't just use any old motherboard for this. Beautiful packaging. Smells good too. <laughs> So the motherboard I went with is a Rogue Maximus X Hero. Apparently this is one of the better motherboards to use for building a Hackintosh. First of all, I'm going to be putting the CPU in the motherboard. The CPUs I chose was an Intel i7-8700K. Alright, let's chuck this sucker in. I'm going to open this up. So yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and drop that in. Got the arrow pointing in the right direction. Let's see in, I reckon. Just gonna close this up. Yeah, she's in. That out of the way. Alright guys, so now I'm gonna install the RAM. I went with um, Corsair Vengeance. We've got 32 gigabytes, so that's a bit of an upgrade over 4 gigabytes. And the speed is 3200 megahertz, so that's pretty fast. On the motherboard, it tells you what slot you need to put them in. So I need to put one in A2 and one in B2, since I'm only using two of these. You gotta match it up with a little notching. There we go, there's one in like that. Now I'm going to get the case out. It took me forever to decide what case to get and this is the one I went with. There it is, the case. I went with this case because I had really good reviews. They're a few years old now so didn't really cost that much compared to some cases and it's really good quality. Anyway I'm going to remove the side panels now. There's a box of goodies in here that I'll need. This motherboard has like an inbuilt IO shield. So I think she's all good just to put in. Hopefully the standoffs or whatever they're called are alright. See how it goes eh? Yep, all the standoffs are already put in place. Now I just gotta screw it down. That looks so sick already. I like the white on the inside of the case with the black and grey on the motherboard. So next up I'm going to install a power supply. This is the power supply I went with. They went all out with the packaging though. <laughs> That's so good. Alright, so I'm just going to slide that in from the side. I've got the fan facing down. Beautiful. I haven't put in the M.2 SSDs yet. I should have done that before I put it in the case. So one goes in underneath there and the second one is just there. Just got to screw that down now. So I'm going to take this off here. I'm not really sure what it is. So now I'm going to install a second SSD. 
This one is the Evo one. It's not as fast as what the Pro one is, and also it has 12 less gigabytes. This one's 500, the other one's 512. Got both the M.2 SSDs in there now. In the future, I'll probably add some more hard drives for long-term storage. These are just fast little things. All right, so next up, I'm gonna install a graphics card. This is another part that really matters when it comes to building a Hackintosh. It's an Asus Strikes gaming graphics card, which is a Radon RX80. Pretty sure the Radon RX80 work with um, Mac OS. It also came with a code that allows you to download three games. It's got Assassin's Creed, Strange Brigade, and Star Control. Uh, I only know Assassin's Creed, I don't know the rest. Alright, that's done up now. Got the graphics card in. Next up, I'm gonna install a Wi Fi card. This is another important piece when it comes to building a Hackintosh. This one's all the way from China. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here, I think. Gotta remove that, slide it in, tighten it up. Now I'm just gonna screw these antennas in or aerials, whatever they're called. Done. Next up, I'm going to be installing the Be Quiet Silent Loop 280mm radiator. So I'm actually glad I didn't get a bigger radiator because then I wouldn't be able to have this disc tray thing. And I'm actually going to be installing like a card reader in there. So before I continue with the radiator, which I'm thinking about swapping around so those hoses come from this side, I just want to see if I can get my card reader up in there. Alright, uh, so next up, I'm going to install this card reader. We'll make it easy just to plug an SD card in and get straight to editing. It should fit up in through here. Now I'm going to put the screws in just here. Can't really get any access to the screws on this side, so that will just have to do. I don't think it's going to go anywhere unless I like, push really hard on it. Oh no, it kind of moves a bit. I'm not really sure how to get it though, screws. See what I mean? You just can't get access to it. I'm going to have a go at removing the whole thing and see if I can get access to them. Looks like I'll just be able to get access to them. I undid the whole thing and push it back a bit. Yeah, he's got it dialed in then. All I have to do now is pull it back forward, put the screws back in. So that's the best I can get it. For some reason, the um, tray thing, like the slots, aren't as long on this side. I need to like, cut a little section out so you can push it a bit further, and then it will actually sit flush this side. Oh, this one's pretty good though. So what I need to do is cut these two slots a little longer. Can't really do much further because of that thing there. That's way better now. Now that I've got the card reader all sorted, I went ahead and flipped the radiator around so the hoses come this side. It all fits nicely. So what I'm going to do now is inject some of this thermal grease onto the CPU. That might be a bit too much, hey? Should be good. I'm about to put this down now. There we go. All done. So that's how it's looking at the moment. I'm pretty happy with how it's coming along. Alright guys, I just went ahead and did a bit of wiring. I'm pretty sure I've got everything hooked up. I'm going to go ahead and turn on and see what happens. Got some light happening. Ooh, shit. It was working for like a second. Oh, it's back on now. Yeah, boy. First try. Ooh, that looks so sick. Just need to neaten everything up, but just wanted to see if it worked. Alright, so now I'm going to plug this TV in and see if anything comes up on the screen. Yeah, it's coming up now. Alright, so I'm going to try to load up Windows. So far, it looks like it's going alright. So I'm going to be installing Windows on the Evo drive and then the Pro one for Mac. 
Alright, looks like we got Windows working. That's pretty sick. So at the moment, I'm making the bootable USB drive with Mac OS on it. Shout out to all the people that made this stuff possible. You get it all off the Tony Mac website. So I'm going to be installing Mac OS Mojave or whatever it is. So it's actually loading now. That's finished setting it all up. It's looking good. So now that I know the computer works, I'm going to go ahead and neaten up all the cables. Got the cables all managed, I can finally go ahead and put this back cover on. Here we go, first start now that's all finished. Wow, oh, that looks so sick. So now that I've got my computer all built, I'm going to start setting this room up a bit. But what I want to do is put the TV up on the wall here, just get the desk all in place. I'll probably move my Xbox and all that in here too, so let's get right into it. So I'm going to start by taking this off the wall. I'm thinking about just sitting the computer up here, so then I'll have easy access to all the ports here and for the headphones and that. Yeah, that should be fine like that for now. Now I just have to get everything all plugged in. The power cable for the actual computer is really short and the power point's all the way in the bottom corner there. I'll probably have to run like a power board or something so I can plug the TV and the computer in just under there. I'm gonna plug the power board in here and push it all down in behind the back of the desk. Plug this back in. And I'll drop the cable right behind there so you won't see it out the front here. I'm really happy with how that's looking at the moment. Next up, I've got to get my keyboard and mouse sorted. So what I'm thinking about doing is just hiding it under the case. The cable for the keyboard and mouse. Like that. And I'll just plug it in at the back here. Now really all I have to do is get those cables from the TV going down a bit neater. So right here I've got a PlayStation 3, an Xbox 360 and an Xbox One. I might just hook these up in my own time or if you guys enjoy this kind of stuff I might make like a part 2 and do some more work with all this. So let me know. I might just bring this cable across and zip tie these two together. So it's not two separate cables going down, it'll make it look a bit tidier. So I'll give you guys a quick demonstration on how the dual boot works. Just turn the computer on, normal. First of all, it'll go into Clover. If you don't touch anything, it'll boot into the Mac OS. All done. And yeah, it'll boot in just regularly. And everything works good from here. I'll send something to my phone to show that AirDrop works. There we go. Now it's on my phone. So yeah, it's all done for the Mac OS. Shut it down regularly, it'll turn everything off. I'm going into Clover again, quickly go to Windows if you want to go to Windows. And yeah, it'll launch straight away basically. So I run the graphics card on the stock overclock mode. I did a bit of overclocking to the CPU. So now I'm going to run a Cinebench test on it. So they're the two scores, 182.29 FPS and for the CPU it got 1694 CB.
Some future upgrades for the computer. I'm definitely gonna be putting another fan in the back there. I didn't realize this case didn't come with one and that's pretty important to have. I'm definitely gonna add some more storage in the future, some actual hard drives. So I have a lot more storage to put old videos on and stuff. Maybe one day I might even add an extra screen. I already tried to add this one in, but it uses like an old type of port and my graphics card doesn't have that. You might be able to get like an adapter so it will work, but I highly doubt it's worth doing since this screen is so old. So that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. To all the computer experts out there, don't be too harsh on me if I did something wrong. I do realise I put a bit too much thermal paste on the CPU, but off camera I took a little bit of it off, so I think it will be fine. If you got any tips for me though, let me know in the comments. I'm still going for 50,000 subscribers before the end of the year, but I don't think it's going to happen. So if you're new to my channel, it would really help me out if you press the subscribe button. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.